Hey everyone, GeoArm Security here. Today we're going to show you how to hardwire the siren to the wireless security system. The first thing I want to do is go over the Honeywell 702 self-contained electronic siren. And uh, it basically comes with the large siren. It's an external siren. And you can see the specifications on the back as well as some other, other information. You'll see there are three wires. There is a white, a red, and a yellow. The white will be the ground, as it states here, and then you have a decision. You can go with red, which will be warble, or a pulsing siren, or yellow, which will be a steady siren. We're going to go ahead and use the warble. Uh, we seem to like that a little bit uh, better. And it'll act as your positive. So white negative, red positive. And um, what you want to do is in this application is you want to make sure that the red and the white wire have enough length of wire reaching back to where you're going to be uh, setting up the overall external hardwired siren kit. So that's one thing to keep in mind as we go through this. Moving along, we are going to prepare the actual can and the kit together to make everything a little bit more simple for you, a little bit more of a, an applied application. Uh, you will need access to some wire, some single strand wire, black and red preferable. And you will also need your Altronics relay which comes with the kit, but just to reiterate, the power supply which comes with the kit. And the first thing that I like to do of course is print out the diagram that we have online. It will be very easy for you to access that and follow along with what I'm doing. The first step is you want to make sure that you take your relays out of the box and you put the double sided tape on and clean the surface down of the actual can so when you stick these up you'll get a lot more usage out of them. Go ahead and peel the backs off of these devices only when you're ready to install. Now a key component is you want to make sure that the uh, trigger minus is on the top and trigger positive is on the bottom and I like to install this and I like to use this mounting hole as a reference plate because you don't want to mount over it because if you did that you wouldn't be able to hang this can on the wall when you're finished. I like to put it roughly about the same level as the top of it of this mounting hole just like so and you don't have to completely firmly press it just yet and then you want to do the same with your power supply. Go ahead and peel the backs off of the sticky tape, just like so. And now you're ready to stick this up as well. You want to make sure that the terminals, AC transformer, DC input, these are facing downwards toward the bottom of the box. And I like to line the top of the module up with the bottom of this Zettler area. So you can go ahead and mount it right about there. Okay, that's going to give you some room. You will need some wire strippers. Uh, typically you're going to want something with a clamp at the end. And you'll need two beanies. These are to tie wires together, which we're going to be doing. So you can put those to the side for now. Take out your wire strippers. Keep those handy. And if you take a look, at the first wire that we're going to wire, we're going to take care of the siren first. We're going to make sure that that happens first. So what we're going to do is wire the trigger positive common and we're going to tie that into the red wire of the speaker. So we will need one of these beanies. Now, go ahead and uh, make sure that you have a wire that is leading outside of the box where you can beanie the two wires together and the end that's gonna get beanied, make sure it's got a little extra copper so when you twist it, you can get uh, gets better connection. The other end, a little less copper exposed because that's gonna be going into the relay. And you'll also need a little tiny Phillips head screwdriver. So if you follow the diagram, again, it's gonna be trigger plus and we're gonna wire the common out of the panel. All right, so go ahead and do that. Make sure that this is a that the common is loosened up a little bit so you can slide the wire underneath. Hold it in while you screw it down. Now make sure it is pretty tight. You don't want to strip the screw but you want a good solid connection. 
and this is going to run directly outside of the panel as you can see I'm using the top of the box so that's running through here and you're going to want to locate your positive your other positive wire and we're going to go ahead and twist these two wires together like so you're going to locate one of your beanies the open end go ahead and make sure these get inserted pretty deeply into the beanie and use the top of your wire strippers here while holding in and go ahead and close down and be careful not to pinch your fingers you don't have to do it too hard but I like to just go all the way up the connector just to make sure it has a solid grasp of the wires so you never have to worry about any connection issues now we have that part all wired up so the positive is taken care of the next what we're gonna do is we want to run the DC minus and we're gonna connect the three wires into the actual 702 siren so with your Phillips head screwdriver you're going to locate the DC minus which is right here unscrew that terminal just enough so you can get this small end and remember on these ends not leading out of the box you want a little less copper exposed you're going to slide that into its terminal go ahead and close it up again pretty tight you want to make sure you never have to worry about its connection this end will be running outside of the box here and next we're going to leave that there temporarily that's one of the three wires we're going to wire the trigger positive neg negative minus and that's going to be a black wire as well you're going to insert the end with the least amount of copper as opposed to the one with the longer end which will come out the top of the panel and you're going to insert that end into the back of negative of the trigger positive negative terminal screw that down as tight as you can just don't overdo it the other end will run outside of the panel now you're gonna take these three wires including the negative wire of the actual siren and you're gonna tie them all together make sure they all have a connection once you have them twisted all together like so locate your beanie insert those wires into the beanie protecting the wire and you want to take your strippers here and go ahead and clamp down the wires holding them into place very simple like so for this next part you will need the transformer that comes with the actual siren kit on our web page and the flathead screwdriver and you'll see I have a black end and a red end and I want to insert one end into each one of these terminals it doesn't matter about polarity on this one so either terminal will work fine just make sure that you secure each one down very good so it doesn't have as good of a chance to come out at all screw it down make sure it's tight do the same for the other end like so and make sure that that's snug you can take this part put it to the side and you want to get the other edge of the wire of course with a long enough distance from where you want to plug it in and you're gonna run it through the bottom of the hole the bottom hole right here and we're going to wire it into these far left terminals and again there's no polarity so I like to just unscrew them just a little bit each go ahead and insert one end into the right side try not to let any copper get exposed just as a precaution screw it down nice and tight and do the same for the other terminal all 
All right, pull it tight, make sure it's good. All right, and now we have the transformer wired to the power supply. Also, you'll see the battery, the backup battery leads coming from the power supply. We won't have to worry about that until the end. The next step in our installation, we're going to take our red wire, run it from DC outlet positive into the trigger positive NO. And that's very simple. Both, edge, both edges of these wires, you want the least amount of copper exposed and just enough distance for it to uh, for them to reach each other doesn't matter which way you go first I'll just go ahead and start from this direction I'll do the relay first screw it down into the NO terminal and then the other edge will go into the DC output positive like so screw that down so you do have, again, NO going to DC positive. And that's going to be the most difficult part is up to this point as far as getting this all wired up correctly. Now you're going to need two jumper wires. You, these will only need to be cut to the length of the actual size of the relay, so maybe a little bit over two inches. And you'll see the jumpers are here and here. We'll go ahead and do the trigger minus positive to the trigger positive on the bottom. So that's this terminal here. You want to go ahead and run part of that jumper from this terminal into the bottom left terminal here. Unscrew it. slide it in and you can screw it down now so you got one of the jumpers in there correctly again make sure it's on the po the trigger minus positive plus and the trigger positive terminal now we're going to go ahead and do our red jumper which again is from trigger minus positive plus down to the NO terminal I'll go ahead and wire the NO first So go ahead and insert that, like so. And this one is going to run into the positive plus as well on the trigger minus. So unscrew this terminal just enough to slide this wire in. And go ahead and screw that one down, securing both of those wires into the into the positive plus. So you have both of your jumpers installed now. So we're looking alive here. There's not too much left in our installation here. With the Honeywell L5210 open, I want you to notice the terminals we're going to be working with. There's only two. We're going to be working with TRG and GND. The, these next two terminals in line. We're not going to touch either of the power transformer wires. Uh, we have a little bit of a better way to do that. Now, you also want to have some 22 gauge by 2 wire. On one end, this end is going to be going into the actual box uh, where these will get wired into the relay. So I like to ha have them a little bit longer so they have a little more flexibility uh, when getting wired into the terminals. The other end I like to have the least amount of copper exposed and there doesn't really need to be that much flexibility because they're right next to each other. So with this wire, make sure it is running through the back of the panel, like so. Now that we have the red and black wire run through the back, you want to insert the red wire into TRG or TRIG. Slide that in, screw it into place, very simple. Do the same with the black wire into the alternate GND. Screw that down as well. All right, so now you have the red into trig and the black into ground, and it is in there tight. With the system still powered down, you're gonna take the other end of the wire that you just wired into the back of the Honeywell L5210 
and you're going to run it through the hole that we had knocked out here on the side knockout like so and you'll see that we are in directly into the panel now and we have our relay so you want to go ahead and start off with the red wire and that's going to go into TRG minus up here on the top left go ahead and insert that in there make sure it's nice and snug the opposite end the black wire is going to get wired directly into negative minus on the trig plus terminal so right here so go ahead and unscrew it just enough to slide it in like so make sure now and none of the other wires come loose because there is another wire uh, that's leading out to uh, that's leading out to the actual siren here for the negative so make sure you don't unscrew that and there's a good solid connection in there like so and now we are completely wired up we just need to get power to the panel and we need to do some programming now we need to get power to the panel to do that we're going to go ahead and plug in the backup battery as well as the transformer now the L5210 is at its home screen so hold down the home button to allow you to manipulate then from the home page select security more tools installer code by default is 4112 select rules the first available rule highlight it select edit activate it trigger outputs correct action permanent on then you want to go ahead and select start system operation any burglar alarm stop system operation you want it to be on bell timeout select save you can back out of programming now and now we want to plug in the transformer for the actual uh, for the actual external hardwired siren uh, before you did that though uh, you you're going to want to insert your IM1240 uh, into its proper location which if you followed the instructions correctly on how to mount these devices it should slide right in there take your wire leads black wire to black red wire to red wire and in the event that the power goes out you'll still have some backup battery time I'm not gonna do that for right now so I'm gonna go ahead and power up the actual external siren kit now that we have actually plugged in the AC transformer for the external siren kit you'll notice there's a green light and a red light activated that means we're ready to go to test the system to test the system I'm gonna go ahead and hold down the panic function and I'm gonna select police now to get this to be an audible siren you may need to adjust some programming uh, but you can always test it on a door or window contact or from a panic button like a key fob so I'm gonna go ahead and do that for you now it's very very loud and uh, well worth the the time and effort to install this As you can see, it's extremely loud and, you know, the whole neighborhood would notice. So it's definitely worth the time again. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page. View our blog at DIYSecurityBlog.com. And if you need to reach us, contact us at 1-877-443-6276.